Here is today's featured headline in space. Jared Isaacman's renomination to lead NASA is winning support from industry. Today is November 6, 2025, and you're listening to Space News First Up. Here are today's other top headlines. Astronus announced plans Wednesday to use its small geostationary satellites to extend the range of point-to-point -point communications for disaster relief or secure defense operations. IceEye is giving defense customers guaranteed access to radar imagery from its satellites. One company is working to defend satellites from cyber attacks using its own satellites. And Blue Origin plans to launch its second new Glenn rocket on Sunday from Cape Canaveral. First Up is produced by Space News, the industry standard for professional space journalism. Visit spacenews.com for breaking news, policy updates, and original analysis. We begin today with news that Jared Isaacman's renomination to lead NASA is winning support from industry. At a conference Wednesday, industry officials said they welcomed the announcement by President Donald Trump late Tuesday that he would again nominate Isaacman to be NASA administrator. That move could also help advance pending nominations of Matt Anderson to be deputy administrator and Greg Autry to be NASA's chief financial officer. The announcement came hours after Isaac Mann took to social media to comment on a leaked Project Athena document he wrote before his first nomination was withdrawn outlining his vision for NASA. Isaac Mann said, reporting on the document misrepresented some of his views on topics such as Artemis and space science. Astranus announced plans Wednesday to use its small geostationary satellites to extend the range of point-to-point -point communications for disaster relief or secure defense operations. The company said its Vanguard service enables customers to quickly set up a private network capable of voice, video, and data transport anywhere within the beam footprint of an Astranus broadband satellite, roughly 2,250 kilometers. Astranus CEO John Gedmark said Vanguard is available anywhere and Astranus Satellite serves as an additional service that existing and future customers can opt into starting immediately. ISI is giving defense customers guaranteed access to radar imagery from its satellites. ISI last week announced a new tactical access program that offers subscribers on-demand tasking of its synthetic aperture radar satellites ensuring images can be captured wherever and whenever required. The model contrasts with the traditional first-come, first-served approach, in which operators queue imaging requests from multiple clients. The offering underscores how private sector players are racing to meet growing government demand for assured satellite intelligence, a market reshaped by the wars in Ukraine and the Middle East and by rising tensions in East Asia. One company is working to defend satellites from cyber attacks using its own satellites. The Deloitte One satellite, launched in March, is the first of nine that the consulting firm Deloitte expects to be operating over the next 18 months to demonstrate a technology to detect cyber intrusions targeted at satellites in space. The company is building these satellites to prove that defending space networks from a cyber attack requires putting defenses in orbit and not just on the ground, comes amid a broader rethink of how to protect space infrastructure from cyber threats. Blue Origin plans to launch its second new Glenn rocket on Sunday from Cape Canaveral. The company announced Wednesday the launch date for the NG-2 mission, carrying NASA's Escapade Mars mission. NG-2 will also fly a Viasat payload to test commercial launch telemetry and data relay systems as part of NASA's Communication Services project. The launch will be the first since the inaugural New Glenn mission in January. Discover your next mission in the space industry with the Space News Job Exchange. Visit jobs.spacenews.com to find top aerospace roles and connect with leading employers. And for employers, use discount code J-O-B-E-X for 15% off your next purchase. In other news, Rocket Lab launched a Japanese radar imaging satellite Wednesday. An electron rocket lifted off from Launch Complex 1 in New Zealand at 2.51 p.m. Eastern and placed the QPS-SAR-14 satellite into orbit for the Japanese company IQPS. This is the sixth satellite that Rocket Lab has launched for IQPS, including five this year. This was also the 16th electron launch of 2025, matching the company's total from 2024, with several more launches scheduled through December. 
Space.com reports that SpaceX launched more Starlink satellites Wednesday from Cape Canaveral. A Falcon 9 lifted off at 8.31 p.m. Eastern and put 29 Starlink satellites into orbit. The launch was the 141st so far this year of the Falcon 9, and a SpaceX executive said at a conference Wednesday that he expected the company to finish the year with 165 to 170 Falcon 9 launches, a record. Share your company's news with the entire space industry through Stellar Dispatch, the press release service from Space News. Learn more and use discount code SD2106 for 15% off when you submit yours at spacenews.com slash Stellar Dispatch. Spaceflight Now reports that an Atlas V launch also scheduled for Wednesday evening from the Cape, though, was scrubbed. United Launch Alliance called off the Atlas 551 launch of Viasat 3F2 after detecting a valve problem that could not be resolved before the launch window closed. ULA rescheduled the launch for 10.16 p.m. Eastern tonight. ESA's backing of a space resilience plan suggests the agency is moving from its roots as a purely civil agency. ESA will seek funding for the European Resilience from Space program at this month's ministerial conference in Germany which includes beginning development of a constellation of Earth imaging satellites, as well as new communications and navigation capabilities. The initiative hints at a shift in how the agency envisions its mandate, positioning space systems for dual use and defense applications rather than purely civilian missions. It also signals a growing alignment between ESA's civil mission and Europe's broader security ambitions. New Scientist reports that the expansion of the universe may be slowing down not speeding up. A team of South Korean astronomers argues in a new study that a class of supernova explosions used to measure the distance of distant galaxies suffers from an age bias that, once corrected, indicates that the universe's expansion is now slowing down rather than accelerating. Other astronomers, though, argue that the changing brightness of those supernovae are already accounted for and that previous similar work by this team has been refuted. 